following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. talk about something that is related with that which is not physical. Physical. What is that which is physical? The body of, of flesh and bones. So this is together with the psychology. This is a psycholo psychological lecture. Remember that psyche means the soul. So we have to understand the different uh, inner parts that we have within in relation with that which we have to work with. We are going to talk about the ego, the personality, and the consciousness, which are three different things that we have to study and that we have to comprehend in order to, uh, to know ourselves. Because uh, the job that we have to perform is directly related with that that uh, is within. Let us talk about the ego. As I told you in other lectures, ego is a Latin word for for me, for the I, the me, the person, the psychological ego. And uh, uh, I told you that the ego is mind. In the lecture of evolution and devolution, I told you that the mind is that uh, element that evolves in nature from the mineral kingdom to the humanoid passing through the plant and animal. When the mind enters into the intellectual animal or the humanoid, that mind starts uh, being uh, single, an individual, but not the individuality or the sacred individuality that uh, we have to have. It's just and apparently individuality. That mind turns into that that we call ego, which uh, many schools study at this time, and they think that the ego is divine. But I, I, I told you, the ego is just a result of the final uh, evolution of that that we call mind. Of course, the ego is related with the lower part of the mind, which is the emotion. So when we reach the level of humanoid, and then we have fully developed the three brains. Remember that we have three brains. The three brains are the intellectual brain, the emotional brain, and the sexual insensitive motor brain. So the three brains are fully developed in the intellectual animal called man by mistake. 
Uh, if we study other type of uh, living organisms, we find different uh, develop developments of uh, the brains. For instance, in the plant kingdom, we discover that they have emotional brain. When we talk about brain, let us uh, understand that we are talking that physical vehicle. We are not talking anything about, uh, I mean, uh, which is beyond the third dimension. When we said brain, we are talking about that uh, uh, compound of uh, forms or cells that are the vehicle of the different uh, activities or inner parts of our consciousness. When we talk about the mind, for instance, we know that the intellectual brain, which is in our head, is a physical vehicle of that mind. But also we have another brain, which is located here in our solar plex, with all the nerves that are in conjunction there, forming another brain with uh, different uh, ends of the uh, uh, grand uh, when sympath sympathetic nervous system and it is related with the emotional center and this brain is in which we find and we feel our emotion but also we have another brain which is situated in the spinal column that brain is in relation with the movement we know that at the end on top of the spinal column we have the motor center and in the end, in the bottom, we find the instinctive center. Both centers are related to movement. But uh, in the upper part, we have the customs and habits in relation with the motor center. And in the lower part, we, have, we find the instinctive uh, functions of our organisms, or instinctive functions of our ego. And, of course, it's also related with the sexual center, which is located in our sexual glands. So that motor brain is in relation, of course, with all of the uh, movements of the uh, organism, of the physical body. And the emotional brain with the emotions of that uh, uh, brain and in the head, the intellectual brain. We find, for instance, that uh, the ego is that uh, particular entity that was evolved from the mineral to the plant to the animal in which in the humanoid kingdom and acting, of course, according to the evolution in, the, in, the, in, in this body with three brains. That's why the humanoid uh, vehicle is uh, the most evolved organism of nature, but it's still an animal. So this uh, vehicle is how the ego acts in the three brains. But you see, for instance, in the animal, the animal, in spite of having the brain, is not completely evolved because the brain of the animal has not intellect. But our brain already developed the intellect, which is the capacity of rationalizing. And that is the difference between the animal and the intellectual animal. That's why we call it intellectual animal. So when the, inter the, the animal wishes the intellect or develops the intellect, then that mind becomes ego which is, of course, different particles of the animal mind that starts to think, to rationalize. That because it belongs to the animal kingdom, is going to rationalize or to use the intellect in the animal way. That's why we find that most of the ego, or the parts of the mind that we have within, are always thinking or rationalizing in the lower way, not in the human way, but in the animal way. We have, for instance, lust, 
if you see this humanity is related with lust there are many devices and many other things that humanity creates in order to satisfy lust in many ways you find for instance the uh, animal mind of uh, uh, anger which is very uh, is pretty normal among the animals but the anger in the animals are of course not fully developed like in the intellectual animal because when with the, with an intellect the intellectual animal has the capacity of create weapons in order to hurt the other that is hurting him while in the animal which is not rational is using all, all, only uh, their own uh, hands or paths in this case, right? Or teeth in order to attack or to defend himself. It's material. But here we are, of course, acting with the ego or with the mind, the animal mind, in order to acquire uh, fame, for instance, that it is going to be related with pride, right? So, those uh, aspects of the animal that are instinctive and uh, emotional as well are acting in the intellectual animal through the mind and is, uh, or they are becoming more dangerous because then the, the, to the intellect that uh, animal aspect becomes uh, dangerous terrible dangers at this time that we see for instance in our uh, humanity we said humanity but in reality it is not right, of humanoid hum, huma, humanoid society so that's why it is not uh, strange to see uh, wars and many different type of uh, degeneration in the animal way because the mind, I repeat, is still animal. The only difference is that it is intellect. Uh, there are many uh, types of persons in relation with the animal mind. A sly person is always a fox in the mental plane, which is, of course, that animal mind related with that uh, capacity of the fox. If somebody is so lustful, and then in the mental plane, that mind is going to take the form of a pig or a dog. If somebody is so uh, proud, that animal mind is going to take the form in the mental plane of a pickup. So each one of us in the, in the mental plane is having a different type of animal form. And these are, of course, what religions call the seven capital sins, or that, uh, which are related to the three brains. So the ego, of course, related to the three brains that we have in the physical body through which the ego acts, are related to the three traitors of, the, of Christ. Because Christ is that uh, entity related with the monad which is coming into the world in order to accomplish the will of power or the will of the monad while the ego which is uh, a, a creation a mechanical creation of nature is only created in order to accomplish the mechanicity uh, the automatism of nature and is not uh, related with the will of our monad so that's why the ego always acts according to the laws of the mechanism of nature. And that's why, that's why the ego itself, which is mine, is the traitor that we have within. Traitor of our monad. Because he is not accomplishing the will of our monad, but the will of nature. This is how uh, always is symbolized uh, the mecha mechanicity of nature in relation to the moon. You know that the moon is uh, the mechanism of this planet. The moon is related with silver. And remember that the number 30 in Kabbalah is in relation with the world. 
That's why uh, Judas always sell the Lord for 30 silver coins, which are, of course, related to the mechanism of nature. Judas is that part of our being in battle into the ego. Right, so you find there the symbology of the 30 uh, silver coins with which uh, Judas is uh, buying the Lord, right? which is, of course, the ego, uh, preferring to satisfy the mechanism of nature than to serve the one moment. Mm. So that's why uh, in the body, the physical body, we find three features. Mind, the creator of the mind, desire in relation with the heart, which is the opposite of real power, and sex, which is of course the opposite of uh, chastity, or the world that we have to do within ourselves. So when we talk about Judas, Pilate, and Caiaphas, the three traitors of the Lord in the Gospels, we are talking about the three brains. Judas in the sex, Pilate in the mind, and the liar, which is, of course, Caiaphas. Concentrated desire is evil will. Because when we talk about desire, of course, we find desire in the mind, we find desire in the sex, and also in our heart. But when we point here desire in relation with the heart, this area, we are talking about concentrated desire, which is evil will. When we concentrate a lot of desire in this area, and then we do the will of the ego. Mm. Anyhow, in many other philosophies, and schools, always we find the three forms of the ego represented by three demons. And these three demons exist. When we talk about, for instance, the demon of the astral plane, we find that is the ego related with that astral plane. We find the demon in relation with the mind in the mental plane, and the ego in relation with evil will in the causal plane. So the initiate has to disintegrate these three types of ego or demons. But behind these three uh, traitors, we find the seven capital sins, which are, of course, as you, hear, as you see here, the seven heads of the dragon. So in many symbology, also you find a dragon with seven heads, which are, of course, the seven capital sins. And behind the seven capital sins you find religion. Because behind those seven capital sins you find a lot of aggregates or small egos in relation of course always with the mind. And remember that when we said mind is because even the physical body is mind. The mind is a matter. And in the matter is we, we find the mechanicity of, uh, of nature. The mind uh, more dense is the astral or emotional body. More dense than we find the physical body. So when we talk about Judas, for instance, is the degenerate demon of desire in relation with the body, in relation with the sexual force. So when we start doing the job in order to control the ego, we are starting with the body. We have to control the body, the physical body. And the demon related with this physical body <coughs> is Judas. But then we have to control the mind. And the demon related with the mind is Pilate. The way in which the ego satisfies or justifies himself in order, of course, to uh, feed the to feed himself. And the evil will, which is always doing the opposite of what we want to do in relation to the job of our Father which is in heaven, our moment. So there is nothing divine within the ego except 
the consciousness which is embattled within it. But unfortunately, when the consciousness is embattled within the ego, it's always acting evil or in the wrong way, you can say, according to the mechanism of nature. So see here and understand that the consciousness, when it's evolving from the minimal plant and animal, and then is acting in the evolving way through the mind that nature is given us in the evolution. But when that mind is reaching the intellectual animal, the intellect starts to create different type of ego that attract the consciousness in the involution or devolution. Because then the intellect, due to the ignorance of the consciousness, starts creating different aggregates. Those aggregates are the result of the ignorance of the intellect, of the animal. And those aggregates are wrong creations or crystallization of the same mind in the wrong way. Because when the consciousness is evolving, and then the mechanism of nature is of course related, or is, yeah, is related with the intelligence of the same mechanism which is creation, perfection. But when the ego or the mind receives the intellect and then starts acting by himself, not under the direction of the angels or on the direction of other monads in relation with the evolution, when you receive the intellect, you feel capable of doing it without obeying the angels or the higher masters, the higher monads. The result is the creation of something wrong, which is the ego. Mm -hmm. Now you understand, right? You're uh -huh. getting it. And at this time, of course, because the humanoid believes that he is capable of doing many things for himself, the result is a wrong creation, a wrong uh, civilization, like this in which we are uh, living in this very moment. So the ego is not positive like many religions or philosophies state. They say that there are two types of ego, the inferior ego and the superior ego. And they say that the superior ego is divine and the inferior is not. But no, the ego is always inferior because the ego is that animal mind evolved in the intellectual animal. Human is different. The human is above all animals. So if you have ego, it is because you have still something from the animal kingdom. So there is nothing divine. So the ego, or that mind, animal mind, belongs to nature, belongs to the mechanism of nature, and is nothing related with divine. If we want to be, or to have a human mind, we have to create it with the process of alchemy. So of course, in relation with this, when we enter in this status, now that we are intellectual animals, we know that we have to enter into the human kingdom, and for that we have to annihilate the animal part of us and to create the human part of us. But the most difficult thing is to annihilate. So we have to know that each one of us has his own idiosyncrasy. What is that idiosyncrasy? It's that particular psychological individual character that is always characterizing us different from the other. So we have to discover that particular idiosyncrasy that we call the uh, individual uh, particular character in relation with the ego, in relation with our mind. Remember that always we have a, this particular ego that characterizes more than other egos. And to that ego, the rest of the animal mind, which is also animal, acts. You have to catch this. For instance, if you examine a prostitute, it is obvious that the ego that characterizes that prostitute 
It's lust. But maybe she is a prostitute not because of lust, but because she is uh, afraid of being poor or being afraid of life. And that's why she is a prostitute. But of course, lust is related with it. But that lust is acting through that particular ego because of fear. Mm -hmm. So we have discovered, of course, that ego which is obvious in ourselves, it might be that particular idiosyncrasy that we have in relation with our mind, but maybe not. But anyhow, we have to start destroying that particular ego which is bigger than the others. And to discover that particular idiosyncrasy that we have in, in, in relation with that mind, animal mind, in order to annihilate at least the 50% of that animal mind. When we discover that idiosyncrasy, we are capable of our to destroy the 50%, and then we advance very, very far. And this particular ego that I'm talking about is always related with our problems, with uh, uh, different type of problems, uh, uh, behavior, uh, relatives, friends that we have in our life. You find a drunkard in bars. You find a drug addict among the dealers of drugs, drug dealers, and involved in problems in jail, etc. So you have to discover what type of friends do you have that you have in them. You don't need to discover that particular idiosyncrasy. From your childhood, of course, until this very moment, you always have uh, this type of friends, this type of problems, this type of behavior that is always normal and related with your idiosyncrasy. Many people think and always uh, desire or wishes to be in relation, I mean, uh, meeting angels and great masters for the brotherhood. But these people are not changing their psychological ego. They feel the same. You see many uh, students of Krishnamurti, many students of uh, Sivananda, Yogananda, and many type, many students that we find here, in, particularly in this area of Los Angeles. Thousands of followers of many gurus and channelers that they like and enjoy the doctrine, the esoterism, but they do not have any. And any, how you call, relationship with high masters, only through mediums that they think that they are masters, demons talking to them, but never in their life they were physically face to face with a master, not even in the astral plane. Why? Because always we attract and we are related with those personalities related with our level, related with our idiosyncrasy. If we are studying Krishnamurti and we are putting that belief in our animal mind, it's good. But if we don't perform that that we are studying, and if we keep uh, performing the sexual act of the animal, the result is that what we are, we are going to be always animals. Right. So we have to change our behavior. We show physically and then psychologically that we want to change, that we want to behave like humans and then the master are going to approach us. And that is a problem in these times, in these times. Because most of the gurus or teachers, they are just teaching what they hear. They are not real gurus. They are just uh, sometimes dealers of the temple, selling and buying the doctrine that are sometimes is not the white doctrine, but black one. So the ego is many, is legion. At the end, legion. There is a parable in the Bible. No, it's a parable, but it's a, a story of a madman that was always <coughs> throwing palm 
put their mouth right and always being attacked by demons. And Jesus approached him and uh, the demon stuck to him. He says, uh, what are you coming to us, son of God? The man said, it is not time for us yet. And then Jesus asked him, who are you? And he said, uh, we, I, mean, I am legion because we are many. Right. So the ego of that person, of course, was talking to that person. But when you read the Bible, many evangelists, they think that many demons were in that person at that moment. That Jesus took the demon from that person and, she was, and the person was after that was okay. Right? The reality is that any one of us is a legion. And going to take the demons out is not because somebody is a possessed of some uh, 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 particular entity out of the body. The reality is that the egos are demons within ourselves. The last is a demon, and we have that demon within. Anger is a demon as well. Hatred. Envy. Right. So the demons live within each one of us. And some of them are good, because they are also good demons within. Right. And that all that is ego, animal, mind, with intellect. Is the only difference, but it's the same. Belongs to nature. If you don't destroy it, nature is going to take it. It's going to take it. It belongs to it. The loss of mechanism of life. But that is what we call ego. You know that. What is personality? Well, the word personality comes from the Latin word personae, which means mask. So each one of us has different masks. That's why in the ancient Greece they were performing different uh, act, uh, acting, right? Um, and, yeah. Dramas and, and with, uh, wearing different personalities or masks, right? Personalities. But that's why, because the personality is something or a mask that we build always each time when we have a new body. Right? So the personality even has the form of the very face that we have. But when we say that we have the very face that we have, that personality, it's because the face that we see here is not the real face. And I have that uh, by direct experience when I talk about personality. The personality is related also with the ego, with the mind, in other words. But of course we find another immortal personalities which are not related with the ego. But I repeat, when I say this, it's because an experience that I had uh, before, I was in the, in the internal place. And I was releasing my body. When I released the first body was the physical body. And of course I understood in that very moment that my vital body was a superior part of my physical body. And I saw my physical body only as it is. Right? When I saw and I took also away my astral body out of me. I saw the face of my astral body, and it was the same face that I have here. And then I released my other body, my mental body, and also having the same face. But when I, uh, when I see myself in the causal body, the body of will, which belongs to the sixth dimension, and then I see that I was having another face. I was completely another person. And I understood that this person was my real person. 
my real self. Because my human soul, related with the causal body, is a lower part of my monad. Remember that the monad is the spirit, divine soul, and human soul. And that is the real being. Even though the human soul is also on, is just the lower part of the monad. When I was in the causal body, looking at myself in the mirror, I saw another person. Of course, I see it. And not another person, my real person, but other face. And then I understood there that uh, the mind is that that changes, the matter, but the spirit is always the same. So from the mind below is always the matter, and that matter changes according to the law of karma. And that mind, uh, or that matter, always builds in each return into the physical body a different personality. While the body is being built within the womb of our mother, that personality, it doesn't exist. But it will exist according to these three factors. Genotype, phenotype, paratype. What is the genotype? The genotype is in the inheritance that we bring into this physical world, which is directly related with our mind, with our animal mind. It's the ego that returns. Because genotype is in relation with the genes. In the causal plane, we have our own. Uh, uh, real personality is where the monolith is, the sixth dimension, the causal plane. Right. While the mind below is that fake or that mask that we use, uh, and we use a different mask uh, uh, each time that we return here. Right. So when the baby is, is born, when it's uh, getting out of the womb, that baby is beautiful because it's not showing any mask, it's innocent. And only the 3% of that consciousness, which is free, which is not embossed into the ego, is acting through that small body. But the genotype, which is the inheritance that we bring from other lives, which is the ego, the animal mind, divided in many psychological aspects of the ego, of course, is waiting in order to enter into that small body. But it cannot enter because that small body has no personality yet. And then the baby is starting building that personality with the different uh, uh, attitudes that little by little is receiving from its own ego. It belongs to him, to that consciousness, to that part of the consciousness which is in battle into the animal mind. Even the physical body is related with that inheritance, the creation of the physical body. But the ego is not acting through the physical body before creating the personality. But the physical body is created in relation with it. How? The cell, the primitive cell which is created with the union of the sperm and the ovum is that primitive cell in which we find the chromosomes of our father and mother, which is of course attracted one to each other according to the law of affinity that I talked to you in the other lecture. So that woman and that man who are performing the sexual act, in the, in the moment of the spasm or orgasm, that particular note is related to the same vibration of the silver cord or the antikarana cord that is of course waiting to be united to another sperm and that ego of that antikarana cord is of course in the fifth dimension waiting for another body. And according to the law of affinity, the, the silver cord, the stream of the silver cord is attracted, right? Like a, a, like a magnet to the sperm which is entering into the oven in the moment of the spasm. So that spasm is a vibration that is in affinity with the ego, right? 
because that spasm and orgasm is related as well with ego of each one of them, mother and father, because that is the law of affinity. So when we investigate that primitive cell, then we discover 48 chromosomes. In each chromosome is uh, is uh, it, it has a hundred or more genes, and in each gene, of course, we find the ego. Right, that particular note of vibration that I'm talking about in relation with the ego, which is in the fifth dimension. So all the tenebrous vibration of Dracula, which is the ego, is passing through the Antikarana, right? And this is how the karma is going to be fulfilled in the body. If that particular ego in the other body that died in the other life was cruel, and then that particular cruelty is going to, to block the light that is going to be related with the creation of the sight in the eyes of that baby. The result is that that baby is going to be born blind. So behold here how this personality of this new baby who is blind is directly related with his own inheritance, right? Karma. So genotype is always related with karma. But of course, this is how the body is created according to that law, according to the actions of the past life. But after the body is created, then the phenotype starts. The phenotype is the education that we receive from our parents and um, uh, teachers. So our parents, because they are egotistical, because they are not awakened ones, they are going to behave in the animal mind, in the animal way, and the result is going to be the creation of a personality related to the animal mind. And this is how the, the baby is having the inheritance or the attitudes, moods, moods of the father or the mother, right? Because they are received by example. And from the zero to the seven years in the childhood, the body is creating the personality or mask that is going, of course, to act in this physical plane. But that mask, I repeat, in the beginning is related with the inheritance that he is bringing from the other world, from the other life, and from the parents, the attitude, moods, habits, customs, etc. That they see and hear learning about animal attitudes. So, at the end of the seven years, all the ego is within. At the first year, for instance, maybe anger is entering, right, according to the developing of that personality, and then pride. But uh, 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 I remember a friend of mine from Chile, uh, he was telling me that he remembers when he was three years old, and he was having the last within. And he was thinking lustfully at the three years old and doing foolishness at a three years old. And he says, and I feel shame because I remember that I had three years old because I remember the three uh, birthday, the third birthday, all right? And it was amazing, so what happened? Yeah, the la I had the last at the three years old. So imagine that type of personality, mm -hmm. right? So of course, sometimes pride enters first, sometimes anger, right? But m usually pride is within and anger. Right. This is usual. You see that, that most of the babies are like five or six months, even though they are still innocent because personality is not created. After the same year, the personality is already created. And that personality is the one that receives the name of, ma of mommy and puppy, right? So that name, of course, is of the personality, but it's not a real name. It's a name that they thought to have, to put it, right, when we were babies. So that name is of the personality that we have. Anyhow, the name of the personality is not related to the name of our monad, which is completely 
apart, you know, in relation with the animal mind. So that is, of course, the inheritance, the genotype. Parents and our own inheritance. Because even the, the genes that we are inheriting from our parents are related with our affinity, with our ego. And we have the parents because of our ego. So we have the parents that we deserve, and the parents have the children that they deserve. Now you understand why th- those children that are being born with drug addicts, drug addicts, they are having a drug addict uh, convulsion from their childbirth. Right? The phenotype, of course, is a type of uh, knowledge that increases the personality. Unfortunately, the, all the teachers and uh, friends of the type of education that we receive is coming from the animal mind of humanity. So all the knowledge that we have is animal, even if it's intellectual, uh, with the exception of the holy sacred books which are written by real human beings. And this is in relation with some higher knowledge. But most of the knowledge that we receive in colleges and universities are just garbage. So, the phenotype, what type of phenotype do you receive in the school? Yeah, in relation, in relation with the, uh, the animal mind, mechanical, right? The war, uh, if you kill uh, someone in the name of the flag, you are a hero. But if you kill someone in the streets, right, that are your, your citizens, the relatives, you are going to be in jail, but if you kill someone that is not of your country, and then you are a hero, right, and you, it's, it's something disgusting, right, but this is the animal mind, it's an animal behavior, okay. so the phenotype is animal, 100%, it's, it's useless, it's no good, garbage, trash, of course we have to, to look for a good uh, phenotype, or phenotype, in order to have uh, education, knowledge for our soul, for our spirit. Because the type of knowledge that we find outside is just related with the animal mind. Paratype, circumstances. The different circumstances of life also are related with the, with the developing of our personality. Unfortunately, in the different circumstances of life, always we learn in the wrong way. But when we have a very good knowledge in relation to the monad, then we learn to take advantage of the worst circumstances of life, and then to build so. But here we find that, for instance, let us talk about uh, apartheid, a circumstance, which is always obvious. A terrible circumstance like uh, someone reaching his house and finding his uh, partner committing adultery with other. The common sense in the animal mind is to kill. Yeah, you see that in the movies and e- everywhere. The type of examples, of course, if, you, if that happens in your life, you are going to kill. Well, then something that you feel here, you are going to do it, right? Because this, the first thing, you have a weapon in your hand, but right? it's not a human behavior, it's animal behavior. So always, uh, the, the, per, the persons always behave in their personality, they have different type of paradigms, examples, strong examples, that make them to act in the wrong way, or in the way of the animal mind, but not in the way of the human being. The paradigm different circumstances or behavior of personalities, uh, this time we go a party in this area, right? you have to be drunk. This is a common way of behavior. The thing is this, that the paratype is the attitude or the behavior that you always do in the different circumstances of life which are approaching unto you uh, by surprise. Hmm? By surprise, if you are, for instance, uh, poor, in your subconsciousness, you remember the childhood. Your father was also poor, and he went into the 
supermarket and he was stealing fruit. And you were accompanying him and you remember that in your subconsciousness, even if consciously you don't remember it. But you were stealing food with your dad and you returned to home and you, you ate, right? Because you didn't have money. Now you are in the same situation and because in the subconscious you have that uh, memory, you go to the supermarket and you do the same thing. Even though you don't remember. But sometimes you remember. So the different attitudes of the personality of the persons in this physical plane is because they have that example in many ways. Right. That's why it's very important to make the con subconsciousness conscious. Yes. And we have traumas. Sometimes uh, when we see a different type of personalities, we hate them in the very instant. So there's a trauma that we have in childhood. Uh, maybe we were we are remembering something that we is not in the consciousness, but in the subconsciousness. Right? Different type of criminals. Right? All these act uh, in different ways according to the different the part types that they had when they were children. Part types, of course, also are related uh, with different uh, uh, environments. The prince, the, my, my personality is different. In my personality, I have the uh, phenotype and the paratype of the different countries where I was, right? Visiting, dealing with people, so my personality is different. Right? So always. So that is the personality. And the person, when the body dies, the personality is always, uh, you know, going from one place to the other right after death and it is integrated in the space with the time there is not any future for that personality personality dies with the body in a niche we turn I repeat we build a new one according to the three factors of the personality the personality is energetic and atomic, energetic and atomic. Atomic, because it's in relation with the mind. Energetic, because it's built with the energy of the body. This is uh, this person has a very strong personality, right? which means the personality is related more with the mind, right? Where with the ego and with, with this humanoid, very very strong, like the personality of. Michael Jackson, for instance. Right. Listen very carefully. When your personality is very strong, it's more difficult the self-realization. Because when we fight against the ego, we fight against the personality as well. It's a false creation. So it's in relation with the mechanism of nature. Even though we need it in order to socialize. Yeah. But in the end, we have to get integrated as well. But we have to take advantage of it while we have it. And we have, of course, to change it in a good way. To put the personality at the serve of the, of the being. It's a, it's a service of the being. And the consciousness is the other thing that we have within, which is part of the human being, of the human soul. But the consciousness is not the mind, the consciousness is not the body, the consciousness is not the personality, the consciousness is that which is part of the soul, which is beyond the mind. Unfortunately, because it's a battle into the mind, the ego, it is not free. The consciousness is the soul, the soul is the consciousness, the consciousness is essence, the essence is the soul. That unfortunately is in battle with the mind. Condition it. A condition to the ego. We have an embryo of soul, an embryo of consciousness that we have to work with in order to build a human soul. In order to build a human being. 
In order to build consciousness, in order to build soul, we have to work with the three factors of the evolution of the consciousness. But in this lecture, I pointed out alchemy, the first factor. Alchemy, which is the transformation of the solar light within each part, uh, one of us. You know that alchemy comes from Allah and chemistry of Allah. That's Allah chemistry, or the chemistry of God, in other words. How to transform the electronic part, because the consciousness is electronic. The electronic world, the electronic dimension, is a sixth dimension. If we want to deal, if we want to increase our consciousness, we have to uh, develop the electronic energy within each one of us with the alchemy. That electronic energy is the solar energy, which is deposited in the Muladhara chakra, which is, of course, related with the, uh, with the fire of the Holy Ghost, according to the Bible. And according to the Hindus, it is a Kundalini, or the electronic fire, or the solar fire of the Holy Ghost. When we learn how to transform, how to transmute the solar energy that we have the, in the sexual matter of our sex organs, and then we start creating soul and increasing our essence with the same electronic force, because the Kundalini is electronic. Consciousness is electronic. The awakening of the Kundalini is, of course, uh, the beginning of to be born again. The beginning of creating soul. The beginning of possessing the soul. So alchemy is, of course, the transformation of all of the energies of the physical body for the advantage of our soul. Beginning with the sexual energy, which is the most powerful one. Illumination. The consciousness has to be illuminated. To learn to see illumination, we have to take the consciousness from the darkness and put it into the light. The darkness is the ego, the animal mind. The light is our monad. If we want to receive power to illumination initiation, we have to annihilate the ego, the animal mind. To take that consciousness and bottle into the mind and put it into the monad, spirit. But here's the second factor, annihilation. In the past of our past lives, because the animal mind reached the level of intellectual animal started to devolve, to evolve, or to, re to regress according to the mechanical laws of nature. The result is the creation of karma, which is, of course, karma is the, the law of cause and effect a lot of uh, damages that we were doing against ourselves, against nature, and against neighbors. So now we have to annihilate that karma. And in order to annihilate that karma, we have to balance that karma, that law of cause and effect, by doing good in favor of nature, in favor of ourselves, and in favor of the neighbor. And that is what we call charity. The only words to sacrifice for humanity. Charity belongs, I mean, charity starts or begins in home, begins in our body. Sacrifice, which means sacred office or sacred duty. Our sacred duty is to transmit to annihilate, to change ourselves into a good thing, not being animal, but being human. To help our neighbors, our brothers, and humanity, 
by helping humanity, we also help nature. If we do not do that, the result is hurting nature because the mind is devolving and means of a structure weapon against our own mother nature. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy.